We have the big problems that exist for everybody. We have the regional, the local, and then we have our avatar and they have a yeah. specific problem. Hey guys, I'm so excited to welcome Chastin J. Miles as a powerhouse in real estate and entrepreneurship. I met Chastin about six years ago and so humble, fabulous, wonderful. And he had a list of things that he was going to accomplish between then and now, and he has. He went from sole agent to a renowned speaker, best selling author, and founder of Power Unit Coaching. Chaston's journey is truly, truly, truly inspiring for me and so many others. He's been featured in the New York Times and Forbes. He's here today to share his insights on success and personal branding with key tips and strategies that we can all implement without spending a dime. Let's all welcome Chastin Miles. You're like amazing at branding. <laughs> and now with the shift in the market with NAR August 1st, taking everything, taking, no, August 1st, I'm sorry. August 1st was the date that I decided I was going to dive deep and really like get into it. But it, rolls over August 17th. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you like opportunity baby? It is. It is. And I've been seeing you in, in some of those um, real estate groups and, and, you know, when people are typing messages about that and other things like I've been, I've been seeing you right. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be kind. Mm -hmm. I see people being so mean to one another. Mm -hmm. So where are you finding, where do you think the opportunities are going to come? I mean, we just had Monday. I got a, I saw the message from Chris Sonia at 1 a.m. saying the market's going to crash today. And I asked my girlfriend, Nicole, I was like, how do She's like, well, Asia market opens up before the U.S. market. I was like, oh, that makes sense. I know they've been talking about it, like, but when he's like today, I was like, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. So market that interest rates go up, um, foreclosures, you know, all the stuff. Where do you think the opportunity is if an agent were to rebrand themselves? Where would you think that would be going? Yeah, so um, I think that like with all situations like this, I think the major opportunity for agents are going to be more so on the opportunities that exist, right? And what I mean by that is whatever the market's doing, we know that there's always going to be real estate transactions going on, some type of, some type of transaction, right? But what I found is that when shifts like this happen, there are those agents out there who don't want to adjust, don't want to, um, you know, shift their business, shift their, their focus. And they stay in these boxes where unfortunately that may not be the major opportunity right now. And so right. when I say, um, the opportunity for agents is going to be where the opportunities that are going to exist. It's going to become a huge investor market, you know, like like we're used to people scooping up properties for cheaper. Um, the rental markets are probably going to continue to go up. And so for those two cases alone, right, I see opportunity in that. Yeah, it's especially with with things like um, the Express Offers platform and 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 other things out there like I see major opportunities and I'm not one to be that guy that says, oh, I only do luxury or, or oh, I'm only going to do this because that may not be where the opportunity is in this type of market. And so yeah. that's that's what I always advise to people. And that's what's going to be my strategy. I love that strategy. So you are a marketing guru. <laughs> right? Like you, like when it comes to marketing, you can market like the Dickens. And I remember when I first met you, so nice, so sweet, so kind, so humble. I don't know if you remember, but we had a conversation in the lobby in Puerto Vallarta. My oldest son was with us. 
Mm -hmm. You I remember? Do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it was it was me, you, your son, and um, Smith. Um, what's his name? Jason Smith, right? I think. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But yeah, he's so sweet, so kind, so humble. And you're still that to this day, even with your success. So how do you plan if you're marketing into this next era? How is that looking like for you? How What's that plan? Okay, so let me give you the plan or the breakdown of how I go about things um, when it comes to this marketing. So as we enter into this new era, when, when it comes to my plan for how I'm going to tackle it on the marketing side, it always has to start with your customer avatar. And how I describe that for anyone who doesn't know is it's almost as if you were to place your customer in a video game right? Your ideal customer or your ideal target. And then what is everything we know about that, that customer? You know, how's their, in video game terms, how's their strength? How fast are they? How, <laughs> how, how high can they, can they jump? Right? When we talk about it from, <laughs> from the business standpoint, it's the same thing, but we're, we're talking about, Hey, what, how much money do they make? Um, what areas do they live in now? What is their what does their family profile look like? Um, what type of industry are they working in? Uh, what are some of their future plans? You know, things like that all make up that customer avatar. Because when you begin marketing, especially when it's going to have to be more targeted marketing, you yeah. have to know your customer almost better than they know themselves. And as you put out those marketing messages, you have to speak in their language. You have to um, attract what they what they like to, to see yeah. or, or come off what they like to see. You have to fit into the way that they consume content, marketing messages, the way that they hire people like you have to fit into that. And the more that you can know about them the better you can um, equip yourself and your marketing strategy. Because when you are putting anything out there, you have to talk directly to this person. To right? this person. So okay. do you, I, I go as far as like, I'll give them a name. So it's usually like a, a woman, she's married, has kids. Her kids are, how many kids does she have? Yeah. Um, 2.5 kids or is it like three kids? How old are the kids? Where do they go to school? What car do they drive? Do they drive a minivan? Mm -hmm. Does she drive it or does she drive a suburban? Which kind of a suburban? Is it a Cadillac suburban or is it like a, 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 a Chevy suburban? Is it is it like, and what does a husband drive? And does he mm -hmm. commute or does he work from home or does he do? Does he work in the yard? Does he mow his own yard or does he not mow his own yard? What kind of beer does he drink? Mm -hmm. And like all those details, and what's so fun, I think it's just like when we're, when you create your avatar, it's like you get to decide your best friend, who your mm -hmm. best friend is going to be, right? Yes, yes. And then you're, mar you're literally marketing to your best friend, your ideal best friend and attracting this person. Exactly. A hundred percent. And I'm once you do it like that, and I, I love how you brought up what kind of car they, they drive, because even even with something as simple like that, people may think like, well, what does that have to do with with real estate? Well, knowing what kind of car they drive or what brand make model, whatever the case is, think about now what you can probably do with that local car dealer in your area. Mm -hmm. In a sense of, hey, can you park one of these cars outside of my open house, you know, just for people right. to come by and see that'll that'll get people in. It's going to attract the people who like that car, who fit into your customer avatar. Yes. You well, know? you know, the White Spears, they do that down in Houston. They mm. park their fans. I don't know if it's a Lamborghini. I'm not a fancy <laughs> car kind of a gal, but I see those posts and I think Huey does it too. They got their fancy cars in front of their listings and they're, mm -hmm. they are having so much fun at their open houses. Yeah. And then, but we all know, I'm going to just say, if you have, when, if I, you know, if I just said, 
somebody with a mini labradoodle. You already have a vision of what that family looks like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If you have, if you envision like a pit bull, a super friendly slobbering pit bull with like studs on its neck, you already have a vision for what that owner looks like. Yep. Right? Yep. If it's somebody who likes to drink martinis, extra dirty with a lot of olives at Legacy West on the, you know, you're like, you already know what the rest of that person looks like. Yep. Yeah. I, like, I like, I love this. Okay. So we have figured out our avatar. Yes. Now what? So now it comes to what does this person want? And that's, that's not necessarily the bullet point I want you to write down because <laughs> I, I, I believe in something that's called an exchange of value right? Oftentimes when we're thinking about marketing, we're like, oh, I want to provide value, put out value, value, value. Yeah, I get it. We all do. However, there has to be an exchange of value. What's valuable to me and what's going to be valuable to them? Um, I see a lot of, in, especially amongst real estate agents, we have this mindset of they need to know this or like, I have to put this out because everybody needs to, to know this. When right someone can simply do a Google search and they'll see a gazillion people talking about that. Right. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's like, is that really what they want? Is that what's going to, what they're going to find desirable, right? Is that going to mm -hmm. catch their eye? So with that exchange of value, what I find valuable is going to be that name, email address, and phone number. Like that's going to be valuable to data. me starting. Yeah. Yes. The data. And so what I want to do is say to myself, how am I going to get that information? And I trace it back to, okay, I have to create something and put out something that they're going to find extremely valuable to the point where they want to give me that data to get it. Okay. Right. And, and that's when we, once we figured that out, that's when we get into creating lead magnets or i call them ddp so digestible digital downloads right so ah. yeah someone can just put in their information and they get that download so as we think about this market climate what is our avatar gonna either need to know or find valuable about this current market not just real estate as a whole how to buy a house 101 no mm -hmm how to buy a house when you're upside down in a down market. It's like, Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like the specificity that you have on that. So you really narrow down. So once you know exactly who your person is, you know, like things that are harder to Google. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and discover. Yeah, exactly. And with figuring out who that person is, you're also going to be figuring out what their problems are, you know, mm -hmm. and and as we commonly speak about problem solving and things like that, that goes into what you're going to be providing to them. Like what problem of theirs is it going to solve? We have the big problems that exist for everybody. We have the regional, the local, and then we have our avatar and they have a yeah. specific problem. You know, right. so now I'm taking all of these things that they're commonly hearing out there. Yeah, I hear interest rates are going up. Yeah, I hear the market's bad. I hear eight, we don't have to pay a commission, whatever. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hearing all of these things on a national level, right? And then what's happening locally? And then what does this person want? I take all of that and that's what I'm putting into that offer of, hey, this is the ultimate resource that is going to solve this problem because you know that this, 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 that, and the other is going on. Right. So, I mean, there's a multitude of strategies to figure out what your avatar's challenge is that you're going to solve. So, I mean, I've, I've heard several strategies. How do you go about figuring out what their problem is to solve? I look at other conversations. So um, I'll give you a really easy example. There's a lot of garage sale groups 
on Facebook that you can go in little Elm Frisco, where like you can go in the garage sale groups. And although those are garage sale groups, other conversations happen and there's many different community groups out there. And I read those conversations, even Um, though I may not, you know, I'm not trying to necessarily get into the conversation. Yeah. I'm reading what they're talking about. I'm reading what people are complaining about, basically. Oh, <laughs> and, oh yeah. I love this so much. Mm-hmm. Like, I've heard a billion strategies. This is, I think, my very favorite hyper local strategy. Yeah. And brilliant. Because, you know, everybody talks about go to AI, go to Google, ask this, and then you do search this, and then you read these questions here, and da 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 da. This is such, this is so in tune. What else do you do? This is brilliant. I'm, I'm, that is probably one of the most, most brilliant advice that's so yeah. simple that I've heard in such a long time. And I yeah. get, I mean, yeah, this is so good. what else you got? Yeah, I mean, so so listening to the, the conversations and then crafting that offer. And then from there, it's about driving traffic because you can't just do all this work and expect it to just blow up overnight. So you got to drive traffic to your offer. One thing that I see, especially with internet marketing is if you're in the right place and you're providing the right offer, people are going to take advantage of it. They are going to sign up. Okay. So for instance, what you don't want to do is just blast it out there on your Instagram. If none of your followers, even fit that profile or have that problem. So where did we start? We started in those local groups there. Okay. So now I get to start DMing people, right? Hey, I saw you put this, this message out there about such and such. I'm not sure if this will be helpful to you or not, but I have this, what's your email address and your phone number. And I'll text you the link to it. Ah, Now I'm starting to get it into the hands of other people. And I'll tell you, here's a little secret thing, what starts to happen. And you may not see this immediately, but it almost nine times out of 10 happened. Somebody or that person, however many people I'm talking to, at least one of them are going to post about it or share it in that group publicly. Hey, I got such and such from this guy and he gave me this. It might be be helpful. And then next thing you know, Ah, if all these people are saying, oh, yeah, I want that. I want that. What do I get to do? And I start DMing those people. Right. Ah. Same thing over and over. Okay, so, again, it's 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 very targeted and and very localized, but it's very effective. From there, you got to And it's free. And it's free. It's free. Yes. It's free. I love this. So it's not about just trying to hit everybody and and get anybody and everybody. It's about, hey, who is this customer? And let's focus on just getting them. They're kind of raising their hands here and there. Now we start to be valuable without being spammy, without just putting up ads, without all of that stuff. And then you start building relationships like that. At the end of the day, it's the most important thing. I, I, I have that philosophy kind of like building a downline. You know, you know how they say mm-hmm. like, you don't have a recruit till they've recruited somebody. Right. Same thing with my with my clients. It's like, hey, I haven't done my job unless I've gotten a referral from you or unless mm-hmm. you've put me in touch with somebody else. And so that, that is my goal for them, because I can get super excited and say, oh, I generated 100 leads today. But what did those hundred leads do? Did those hundred leads send me 50 more people? If not, then I still have work to do. Right. So how do you, so now you, you're in the, you're in the group DM. How do, how do you transition a lead into like a, into a client or into a referral source that you can monetize? Yeah, so I'm I'm big on events, um, in person and virtual events. And so what I like to do, you know, instead of the taking the approach like you're ready to buy now or you know let's let's sell now, like I I like to continue providing value. And the way that I do that is I'll I'll host virtual events. So I do virtual home buyer seminars. I do virtual credit repair. I do 
um, homeowner orientations, which are once they've purchased a home, how to take care of it. And, you know, I'll, I'll invite roofers in, I'll invite um, landscaping companies, you know, just to like talk nice. about different things. And so it's really just providing value and they can attend from the comfort of, of their own home. And, you know, how I kind of got to this is you got to think about like your customer journey, especially for an internet lead. Yeah. We try to generate an internet lead and meet with them the next day and then have them close in 30 days. And that just doesn't happen like that. It, it just really doesn't, especially if you don't have that relationship with them yet. Um, yeah. It's very rare that that happens. And so what I do is I build these relationships through events, through through more value that I'm that I'm giving them. I, I don't put them on drip campaigns. Um, I do keep them in in text messages, you know, and I'll check in every now and again. But I just like to invite them to events. And it's really cool because once we do enter into that serious conversation, there's not much pushback. Like I can literally just bring it up. And it's they like, already know you. Exactly. It's like they hey, already you like you. They already trust it, trust you because you have already given them so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love I love this so much. This is so good. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. So we've got events. What am what are we missing? What's that see? So we're we're like in there, we give them their the value that they want. We're inviting them. So you say you text them. You mm -hmm. like text them from like a third party texting or do you text them from your cell? How do you do this from like Google voice? Like, yeah. So, um, I actually have two cell phones, <laughs> um, and not saying you have to go out and buy two cell phones for this, but I have one phone that's literally for just like texting those people. And then I have my, my actual other phone. Which um, cell phone am I texting you on? Just curious. I'm like, am I on the one in this hand or the one in this hand? I think like, I think you're on, you're on my personal one. So I absolutely love it. And I don't know. I just, then whatever number is on my phone, that's what I call you from. So yeah. I love, so you have two phones, one for business. So you literally text them from your phone when you want to invite them to event. You don't use like, um, one of those, what is that text, that group text site? Um, um yeah, I know that those exist, but I don't use them simply because I, I run into problems with them in a sense of like sometimes the messages will start filtering and going to people's like spam folder if they have that turned on on their phone. Or okay. if I call, it'll say likely spam just because it's sending out those mass messages. But one thing is like when I'm when I'm sending these out. I don't necessarily really know who I'm sending them to. I just know that they're, you know, if they're on this this phone and I've tagged them as as this on this specific list, then they should receive this this message. And plus, I want it to show blue. Um, nothing against Android, but I want it to show blue. So because your avatar want... is an iPhone is an iPhone person. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so I, yeah. You're so you you keep it so simple. Yeah. I, I love mean, the I love how simple this is. How simple, duplicatable, and almost free. I'm like, okay, so you have to have a new another cell plan. And I'm thinking your average CRM, although ours goes, comes with our brokerage, but I, before I got this one, I was spending $1,000 a month for my CRM, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And you're like, I think my phone plan is what, $60 a month, $100 a month. I don't know if you have ATT or Cricket, but yeah. <laughs> you know, like seriously. Yeah, yeah. And What I mean else? What else you got? What else are you doing? What, yeah. What's a missing piece in there that we, uh, of the process? No, I mean, I would say the biggest missing piece, because those are pretty much all of the big steps. The, the, the missing piece that we haven't discussed is how, how consistent you have to be with this in mm. order to really get good results. I mean, if we take the concept of marketing, in advertising in general, it's like, it's going to take them a certain number of times to see you before 
they'll answer back or before they'll click on your, your ad or, you know, before certain actions take place. And so even with the texting, even with the DMing people, you know, some people may not answer you back on that first message on that second message. And so then, you know, I'm resorting to, Hey, did I do anything wrong to you? You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm being a regular <laughs> person with this, but if I wasn't very consistent with it, I wouldn't get results. Like, I mean, right. I'm, I'm as consistent with this as I am, you know, posting on Instagram. It's just part of my process. And a lot of people will give up if they don't get that hit early on, or they don't get that person responding back or whatever the case is, but you have to keep up with this. Like even with the classes, I, I've, I've already made my, my class schedule. And so even though they don't know when all the classes are happening, I have a schedule. That's what's going to help me. Be How far out is your class schedule? Oh, it's just, it's just, um, three months out. Oh, so okay. Like, so you yeah. plan three months out. So when you say consistent, so I remember like our coach says, don't do anything unless you're planning on doing it for at least 12 months. Mm -hmm. And then I remember Rob, his consistent was three years. He said, I will be in this and do this consistently and persistently for three years. When you say consistent, because some people consistent means I did it for five minutes. What yeah. does consistent mean to you? <laughs> Consistent for me is more like the Michael Jackson song, don't stop till you get enough. And so what? it's like, <laughs> I'm one of those who starts and like, I'm just not gonna stop until, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know, unbearable, but I'm running a business here. So even with consistency, I believe in scaling. Um, I have, I have people to help me with things like, like this now. So, mm -hmm even when it gets too busy for me, we're not going to stop. And that was a big lesson. I learned that that lesson just from doing YouTube, right? I, 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 I realized I've been on YouTube since 2015 and it's Dang. just like, I know, I know time flies, but it's like, do I have to continue to post YouTube videos? Uh, maybe not. Do I, do I have to talk about the same things over and over again? Uh, probably not, but it's just like, why would I stop? You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not bringing me bad results. It may not be doing what it did in 2015 when it wasn't crowded or whatever, but it's like, why stop? It's, it's, it's still there. It still gets attraction. It, it brings in agents. It brings in leads, referrals. So it's like, why stop it? So when you're doing something like this, yeah, the consistency in, in the beginning is just getting your, your face out there. But mm -hmm. heck, you can have 100 people attend your Zoom class. Are you going to stop? Like, why yeah. stop that? Well, it's kind of like you did the hard work of building it. Now you're just maintaining it. If you walked away and you didn't maintain it, you abandoned it. And now, like, if you wanted to live there again, you have to rebuild, yeah. which is... Ah, who wants to do that? So I love how you said in YouTube, you were there in 2015 and it wasn't crowded, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's a lot, it's, it's a different, it's different to get into that, the YouTube world. Yeah. If you were to start over today, right? Mm -hmm. Where would you go? Like what platform do you think you would lean into that would give you the greatest ROI on time and energy and I guess money. Yeah. So, um, TikTok would be what I would start with. Mm. Um, I would, I would def, I mean, especially for real estate, cause there's still such huge opportunity on TikTok and I love TikTok's algorithm. I mean, I think that TikTok has the best algorithm right now. Yes. And, and I tell people that all the time. And it's so funny when people say to me how like they still feel like TikTok is for the kids. And I was like, man, I've learned some major big things on TikTok. And so, hey, yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I when I discovered I was ADD and, <laughs> and TikTok recognized that I wanted to learn that its algorithm was on freaking point. People are like, aren't yes. you afraid? I'm like, no, no, mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. for me, it's the most perfect concierge service. Yes. 
And here's the beautiful thing about TikTok as it relates to the industry that we're in, because there's there's only so much that you can put in a short video. And if your video is valuable, if people sit there and binge watch your videos nine times out of 10, because I, I, I literally had this have this happen all the time, they're going to ask you where they can get a full video or like where can they see more information yeah. about this? Um, whatever the case is, at that point, you can start to point them to your YouTube channel. Yes. Um, and like with, with, with YouTube, it's all relative. I mean, back in 2015, yeah, there wasn't a lot of agents posting YouTube videos, but there also wasn't um, as many consumers consuming the content as there is now. And so, yeah, there's more people, more agents posting on YouTube now, but there's also a lot more people watching. And, gotcha. um, and we have far greater reach when it comes to these short videos and, and well, just video in general, because think about this, like back in 2015, 2014, 2015, YouTube was pretty much like one of the only places you would go to watch videos. Like, yeah. You know, so if someone wanted to watch one, that's where they would go. Right. Now, you're surrounded by them. And, and so you have an even bigger playing field, I feel, than I started with. Like when I started, I was YouTube and Twitter. <laughs> and now and Twitter. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so TikTok. So the other thing that I hear a lot of people say when you say TikTok, they're like, well, I don't want to dance. And I'm like, well, those ADD people that talk, taught me about ADD, they weren't dancing, right? right? So what do you say to those people who are like, I'm not a dancer? Yeah, well, I'll say if it's showing you a bunch of dance videos, then it's doing that because you're watching a bunch of them. And so get on the platform and search for what you want to see. Once you start watching videos that you actually want to see, the algorithm will start showing you content that you want to see. I love that. I seriously thought TikTok stopped doing dances. And now, <laughs> now you said it's the algorithm. I was like, I don't know why. Like, I, we've talked about algorithm. I'm like, no, TikTok's great. I don't see a lot of dances. That was not the answer I was expecting. But then it all like, woo, I just had a full circle moment where I just did not feel very bright for just a beat. I'm going to tell um, you a little secret about me when it comes to dance videos. I mean, it's kind of funny. Like I still watch dance videos. However, uh -huh. they're like adult dance videos, um, like line dances and things like that, because I'm like, I go to so many events and like parties and people invite me to things and they'll start getting up and doing a line dance. And I'm like, crap, I don't know that one. And so <laughs> I legit watch line dance videos. I love that. Just so I could participate at an event. <laughs> you mentioned that people mentioned like, I want to see the rest of the video and then you point them back to YouTube. So are you spending, are you mostly doing like YouTube content that you cut up to create your TikToks? Not necessarily. Well, I do 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 that, but okay. that's not necessarily my strategy. So I kind of use TikTok as a marketing platform. And so let's say that I have a long form video about a certain subject. I will go on TikTok and record a quick video about that subject in order to get more views on the longer videos. Or I'll flip flop it. Like I will make a quick video and put it out on TikTok and see if people are even genuinely interested in it. And if they are, then I go and make a long form video. So it's kind of ah. like more of a marketing platform for me. Um, what I found is, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with clipping up and chopping up videos and putting them on the other platforms. However, I'm one of those that's more of a, I like to use the platform's native feel and vibe and things like that. And people can tell when you've just chopped up a video or it can yeah. look like it doesn't belong on that platform. And that's what I wanted to stay away from. And I'll tell you, like you look at my TikTok videos, they look a lot different from my YouTube videos, you know, like TikTok. Right. 
you're going to see me in t-shirts and sweats and jeans and stuff like with my hair crazy doing crazy not doing crazy things but giving the information but just not like what you would expect and then mm -hmm. when they go and watch that other video yeah i'm the same guy but you'll probably see me more polished button up because i'm delivering that serious information versus TikTok. you know i'm doing what works what people are receptive to what's going to capture their attention and so you're, TikTok, it sounds like you're you're talking to your best friend yeah yeah you're talking you're to you're talking to your buddy that you know you just happen to be recording this to your to your buddy yeah yeah that needs this information that you that you love and you adore you're talking to your avatar exactly. directly yeah oh that yep. makes so much sense and your avatar is like yeah that's my guy t-shirt sweats jeans crazy hair whatever but he knows his stuff and even filming it like that, like literally even filming where it's just like, boom, I'm just right here versus, you know, I'm on the set and sitting at the desk and yeah. So taking it all the way. I love that. How many posts? So I've heard, you know, like algorithm likes a lot of posts a day, like three posts a day, four posts a day. Where are you at? What's your philosophy on that? Yeah. So um, if you're just starting out, right? You're going to want to post more often. And the reason why you're doing it is because you're, you're kind of training the algorithm mm -hmm. on what your content is about, but you're also testing the waters to see like, Hey, is my audience on more in the morning? Are they on more in the evening? You know, are they more okay. receptive to this, that, and the other? So you're posting more often three, four five times a day. Once you get all that data, once it's worked out for you, then you can get to kind of like me to where it's just once a day, but it's once a day at the ideal time over the ideal subjects looking the ideal way and it does just as well. So, I love yeah. that. So how long have you had your TikTok and how, when, how long has that, have you had that account? And been I've working had this. My TikTok for a year and a half, or no, probably about two years now. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I've had my TikTok for two years. I think we're at three hundred and eighty something thousand followers. Um, nice. And and I love that TikTok doesn't, or it seems like they don't expire content. Um, even though I know eventually they do. TikTok has a longer um, time frame for when they'll, you know, show people your, your content. But last year, when they introduced SEO and said that, hey, we want to be more like a search engine, you know, I was like, oh, they're coming for YouTube right now. But mm -hmm. they've been really good about it. And for people like us or adults or people actually looking for real information, if you're talking about that, you have that video titled right, you're using the right hashtags, all of that kind of stuff, it will come up. Mm. It's, it's, it's going to come up and it's going to, you know, even if that person watches five other people's videos about that before yours, it's going to come up because the platform knows what your video is, is about. And the quickest way for you to know if TikTok knows what your video is about, go to one of your videos and at the top, there's going to be a search bar up there. Uh -huh. If that search bar says similar to what your video is about. So let's just say that that search bar on your video, when you open your video says how to buy a house in Dallas, then you know that they've ranked your video. They know what it's about. Oh, They're going to show it to people. If it shows something like find related content, then they're having a hard time figuring out what your video is about. So your goal every time you make a TikTok is that up there, it has figured it out. Yes, that's- That that's is so smart goal. because that's what the human, because because how often are you talking? And then the person's like, what was that even about? Now you know if you've actually done a great job of conveying the thoughts that were in your head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. And it's listening to you talk. It's reading what you write in the description. It's looking at the title 
of your um, videos. And so you have a lot of opportunity on the platform to get your video ranked. And you have to understand who the audience is and like what the subject is because, okay, we're talking about real estate. We're talking about properties, things like that. That's not typically the subject that's going to go viral. Okay. And right. I think that's what people, a lot of people are looking for in their, in their equating their success to, you know, Oh, I didn't get a hundred thousand views on this, but no, like if you got 200 views on it, and those views had great watch time like those are 200 people that you know specifically fit into consumers of what you have right and they're your avatar exactly yeah. i always tell people don't get caught up on the views right don't get caught up on the views how many views this this got views are not going to make someone watch it and views are not going to rank your video a lot of these platforms they're ranking them based off of what the consumer is looking for. It's the goal of TikTok to keep people on there as long as possible. And mm -hmm. they don't want to show you anything that you're not interested in. And so if you can explicitly say and convey that this is that video that's talking about X, Y, and Z, TikTok is going to show it to the person that is most interested in that. In X, they want to keep them yeah. there. Yep. Oh, I love that so much. So we have designed our avatar, you exchange a value and you stock them on Facebook <laughs> groups yep. and you look for opportunities to gather, to exchange value, which is their mm -hmm. data for your information. Mm -hmm. Then you invite them to online events, mm -hmm. virtual events, which you host via Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Which you host via Zoom. And then you also create YouTube videos, which you've been doing for 10, about a decade now. And TikTok is the wet place to go for if you're new, develop because they've, their audience has boomed, but they're good, people that are consistent and persistent and putting out the right content and doing it correctly hasn't boomed in relation to the viewers. Is that mm -hmm. about right? Yep. Okay, which part of that? So I feel like you've given me a brick, a brick, a brick, a brick. Now, you know that mortar in, the, in between that you put in between to keep it, keep the glue and keep it sticking? Tell me mm. about that part. Yeah, so the mortar, huh? That's a good question. So to like keep it sticking, I mean, you just got to stay relevant, you know? Um, By stalking the groups. And see well, and watching the data. Well, yeah, even I mean, I mean, with that, that's 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 a great um, lead generation strategy and things like that. But on the the marketing and content side, the best move someone can can make with stacking all these bricks is staying relevant. You know, so mm -hmm. for instance, whatever that exchange of value that you create at first, you know, let's just say that it's a, a checklist or a guide, whatever, it's going to expire at a certain point. Um, yeah. even with Facebook ads, for those who, for those who run Facebook ads, you got to keep oh, changing yeah. that, that ad up. It's going to expire at some point when yeah. it, when it comes to your content, right. Which is why I don't plan too far in advance because I have to stay relevant. And as the market's changing, as the industry's changing, as different things are going on, these are opportunities for you to hopefully not like come out of the dark, but these are opportunities for you to be able to now hop on what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Like to be the beacon of light. In, exactly. in that person's in, in the questions that they have. So are you pretty consistent about staying three months ahead or do you like go war one to four months is three months kind of like you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. So three months is a, is a safe spot for me. Um, and it's a, it's a comfortable spot for me, especially for like what I'm doing and by what I'm doing, I'm, I mean, like you see, I have a full funnel here. Right? right. And so it takes time to plan all components of it. 
And so right. even even if I'm going to reintroduce something or um, introduce something new, it's going to take a month or two behind the scenes just to get everything ready for it before I, you know, just blast it out there. But because I'm working on this stuff, you know, whatever's new, I don't want my my socials and my platforms and everything to just go dark. And you got to understand, like on all these platforms, when you stop putting out content or when you take a break, it's 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 harder to recover from that algorithm wise. And so um, I got to stay relevant. I got to stay out there, even if I don't have anything miraculous going on. You best believe I'm still going to be putting some videos out there and I'm still going to be, <laughs> you know, doing things well, because, yeah, you, you just have to stay relevant. So how do you take vacation? Like, how do you take that time off? Because after nine years, 10 years, how do you take time off? That's question number one. And question number two is I'd like to understand, like, the staff, the support system that you have behind you. Yeah. So taking time off is not difficult anymore. Um, and I'd say I, like I do that it anymore. <laughs> I'd say I do it very often to where, you know, when I'm taking time off, since I do it so often, it's not like me going away for two weeks. You know, it, 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 it could be me going away for two days, um, three times, I mean, two times a month or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. But I've also learned to find those like semi-local things that could feel like a vacation to me. Um, just a little thing about like driving up to the casino, like, ah! and, 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 and staying out there for a couple of days, you know. Right, um, I know. Are you up at Choctaw? Yeah, Choctaw, Windstar. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's 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 super easy. And and especially where DFW is located, I mean, it's a pretty much a two hour flight anywhere in, yes. in the country. And so, you know, I, I, I do it often. And so do you, plan, do you just plan ahead for that? Like because you have to be consistent on the tick on the TikTok on TikTok every day. Do you shoot like a quick TikTok while you're like at the casino or do you plan it ahead of time? Like, how does that work? Oh no. Yeah. I'll, I'll shoot it while I'm at the um, casino and stuff. But since I do plan ahead of time and, and like I do, I will admit I, I schedule posts. I, I do all of that, but when it, whatever I'm doing vacation wise or at the casino, I'm still filming. I'm still recording. Like I have, because you're talking to your best friend and your best friend wants to know if you're up or not. Exactly. And I have so many videos out there. I mean, well, not just out there, but even in, in this phone, a lot of times, and this is a little secret that you'll see about me. Like a lot of times when you do see the vacation out there on social media, I'm probably already back by now. Like, and, and <laughs> Because, that was so 24 hours ago. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, yeah, I don't I don't want to constantly work there, but it takes me two seconds to just hit the record button and just film whatever's going on. And then yeah. when I'm when I'm back in the office or at home, then I can sit down and do the work and edit and, and all that stuff. Like it's not urgent to get it out there right then and there. But yeah. it is a priority to make sure that it gets out. So that's when it just gets put on the schedule um, and I get to enjoy my vacation. You know? I love that. So you, you mentioned earlier, like just now you're like, when I get home and I edit the videos, but you also mentioned earlier that you have support. So tell yeah. me about your support, the people in your life that I'm going to like, I'm going to just say they're almost like the mortar as well. That like the glue that kind of keeps it together. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Tell me about your people. How, like, what does it yeah. look like? Yeah, so um, I have one admin. Um, well, she's an executive assistant, and I have a closer, so an, an actual salesperson, and they're mm -hmm. the ones who seal the deal. Um, I do have a agent assistant. Well, I don't even want to call him an assistant. His name's David. He's more so like my agent partner now because David 
takes care of any and every deal that that needs to be taken care of. If it's something that I'm not able to work or I don't want to work or I'm just not available because I'm working on something else, he's quick to step up. And he actually started on my real estate team as a part time agent um, probably four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. And now he's my right hand man. So, um, oh, so, I love that. Yeah. So you brought, him up, you brought him up with you. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's bright, real sharp too. Um, then there's TC for um, real estate stuff. I do have a marketing person and then um, I have two other coaches. So I, I run a coaching business. So I have two other coaches in addition to me coaching and who else? Um, I have a graphic designer. I, I will say this about editing though. I, I'm a control freak when it comes to editing and I learned how to edit videos like early on. It doesn't take me a long time. And it's like, whenever I am filming something, you know, uh -huh. I, I, I already have this vision in my head of how I want it to look, how I want it to be edited. And it can take way too much back and forth. Um, for to you to like teach an, somebody an editor. Yeah. yeah and i've had some great editors and and i do have like editors on hand for stuff that like i don't want to edit or that's not necessary to you know for me to put all my creative stuff going on in it but yeah i do edit my own videos um, i love that you're still you still find joy in it yeah you, you keep yeah. the part that you find joy in exactly all of that came from, from, from that book, um, um, strength, strength finders 2.0, you know, once I read that, I, I, mean, I like to say that it solved all my problems because once I read that book and it really made me zero in on my strengths, I was like, well, no wonder, um, I'm, I'm hating the day to day or no wonder I'm just over this all the time is because I'm doing things that that for one don't make me that happy, but they're not even a strength of mine. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm one of those where like, yeah, all of those positions that I even named to you, I could do myself and I've trained myself on how to do them, but they're not my strengths. Like some of them are just not my strengths. They suck and, your joy. Exactly. And so I'm a big component of putting the right people in place to make this dream work. And so, yeah, I'll do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> I love that. Where are you going to be in five years? So okay. in five years, we'll, we'll probably talk about um, another book at some point. We'll, we'll probably be talking about a huge event that I've put on. Um, <laughs> we'll probably be talking about how my real estate team has expanded into different markets across the country, like my physical team. And we'll probably be talking about a couple buildings that I have that I own around DFW, you know, so nice. And yeah. your TV show. Yeah. We'll be talking about TV too. <laughs> Yeah. I love this. I'm excited to talk to you again in five years. I know I'll talk to you between now and five years, but oh, wow. Yeah. I, you, you're one of the kindest, most humblest people I've ever met. You haven't Thank changed you. one bit. Just you have, you have done the things that are on your, that you had mentioned would be on your list when yeah. we first met six, seven years ago, you've yeah. done that. So I love how you're like, I don't have goals. I have a to-do list. And I have seen how you've already accomplished and checked off your to-do list between then and now. And it's it's happening. It's truly happening. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank I you really appreciate me. you. Like so, so, so much. Um, yeah, is there any you. last thing that you want to share? Like question I didn't ask. And you're like, you know what? I wish you would have asked this because I was excited about sharing this one thing. Well, I do want to share um, my my new book that's out. It's called Do the Most, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Infinite Hustle. 
Okay? Nice. And if you found value in this conversation, I would say go get a copy of this book because a lot of a, a big question like people always ask me is like, how do you do all of this? Like, how do you do all this at the same time? Like, how do you sell and coach and speak and travel? And like, you know, they can't even imagine how I do it. Like, sometimes I can't even imagine, to be honest with you. But what I decided to do was put it all in a, in a book. And what this book is, it, it, it teaches you this concept that I say all the time called infinite hustle, right? To where everything that we do in our daily lives, it's a part of the hustle in, in some kind of way. You know, um, people talk to me or try to talk to me about balance. You know, well, how do you balance life and work this and that? I don't believe in balance. Okay. And I talk about that in the book. I don't believe in balance. I believe. I, in, I agree. In, yeah. I believe in work-life integration, especially as an entrepreneur, because your, your, your business, it has to be integrated in with the family, with your spouse, with, with your close friends not just from an understanding standpoint, but everybody has to be on board. Like, like this is mommy's daddy's lifestyle. Okay. Right. And so everyone has to be on board. So I, so I talk about that in the book. I talk about um, how you can avoid burnout, but still get so much done. I talk about putting the right people in place to, to get things taken care of. And I also talk about that mentality, you know, um, there's we've we've heard people say, oh, you have 24 hours in a day. It's about how you spend it. And yeah, that's true. But in this book, I talk about, well, I don't just want 24 hours in my day. I want 48. I want 72. How you can expand that day way past just your limitations or, or, or your time frames of the day so you can get three days worth of activity done in just one day. So. It's called Do the Most. It's available pretty much everywhere. Um, we'll add the link. We'll yeah. add the link. I love that. So Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Right? Or you can just go to I'm doing the most dot com. I'm so, doing the most dot com. I love that. Yes. And I love that that's going to be direct to you um, without yeah. paying that middleman fee. I'm doing the most dot com. By the way, there was one more thing we needed to talk about. Let's talk about your event, the Do the Most event. And yes. September 19th, that's coming around. Where yes. is that going to be? So it's in Frisco on September the 19th. And this is an event. Um, it's, it's more real estate focused, but all entrepreneurs can attend. Um, we have this event every year. And this year's theme is how any agent can close a hundred homes a year. And so you're going to hear a lot about the systems, like the behind the scenes systems, the strategies, mm -hmm. the marketing plans, the follow-up, all of that in eight hours. And so, yes. Nice. Do so this is, this is a business. This is everywhere. Can I tell you, I have invested thousands. If you see my I have binders over here. That's how old I am. Binders and binders and binders to learn this. And I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And it sounds like what you're getting in one event mm -hmm. is all of that yep. step, like how to step by step so that all you got to do is take it and actually implement it. Exactly. Exactly. What this is, is going to be a great ROI on this event. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about it. I'm excited about it. And yeah, we have a special coupon code for you guys so that you can save some money. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be great. We got people flying Thank in you. from everywhere. Thank you. I know these events, what it's like to put on these events. So coupon code. Thank you for that. ASTC for 50% off. That's an yeah. amazing value. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for all of your nuggets. And I'm excited about your book. So Absolutely. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you.